but Southgate has to go. It's laughable that he gets linked to the Manchester United job. I am now officially Spanish. I played in a team that dominated European football. We had one holding midfield player. I'm not a UK citizen no more. It's been eight years since Gary Southgate was appointed as England manager and he has failed to win any trophy for England. You currently have the best player in the world, the best striker in the world, and a collection of players that any coach would just dream of. So my question is, do you guys really want to waste another Euros? You failed to beat Brazil and Belgium, two football teams that are struggling lately, and they both outplayed you in your stadium. Look, I think it's a popular opinion to believe that the coach is the most important part of the squad, even more important than the player players themselves. A charismatic manager with a great game plan can do you wonders. What Ivory Coast has done on the last AFCON is a prime example of that. They replaced the coach in the middle of the tournament and everything changed since then. And yet the FA are afraid to replace Gary Southgate because the Euros are close. Mancini with Italy in the 2020 Euros or Scaloni with Argentina in the last World Cup. Just to name a few tournaments when the manager was the main reason for the success. But some of you might actually defend him and say, at least he's taken England to the semi-finals and the finals, which no other English coach has managed to do. So that's why he should stay to the next Euro. And just forget about it. It all started back in 2018. England defied expectations by reaching the semi-finals as this was their best result in the World Cup since 28 years. Even though they lost in the semi-finals, England had a fantastic World Cup. England will leave Russia with their repetition in the highest stage restored after the embarrassment of recent years. Oudgate has grown into the job and he has been fantastic and outstanding in this World Cup. While players such as Harry Maguire, Pickford and Trippier have acquired new respect for their deeds and enhanced their profiles. In general, this World Cup felt like the start of something big for England, as by the next Euros or World Cup, Southgate will definitely have more experience to offer and better results will be achieved. But hold on, it's not all positives here. There is a reason why I said it all started in 2018. There is a link between every competition Southgate has played in, starting from this World Cup. So, they beat Tunisia, they beat Panama, and then they lose against Belgium. They beat Colombia and Sweden, and then they lose to Croatia and Belgium again. England have lost in their first real challenge. Well, we didn't expect to get this far in the first place, so to kind of have a young team under a manager who is fairly new to get this far has been fantastic. We finished fourth, but it's, it's, it's been fantastic. We're really happy. We have took fourth at the beginning of this trade, uh, tournament. Definitely. We class it as a win for us. So you're happy with the team? Yes. yes Very happy yeah, with the yeah. team. I think we go again in Euro 2020. I think we've got a really good chance of winning that. With, with the team we have and the manager we've got, uh, two years' time, I think we're going to be European champions. Now, let's switch to 2020 and it's the Euros. And here is when the downfall really started. England lose to Italy in the finals after reaching the penalties. Now, I want you to forget the penalties. Gary Southgate set back for 88 minutes when Italy were there for the taking. Do not blame Rashford, Sancho or Saka. Blame Gary. The Gary Southgate defensive mindset were holding this awesome England team back. They played not to lose. They scored early and tried to hold the lead. Once Bonucci scored court suddenly they were getting pressed like crazy then Keza goes down and the momentum shifted yet Southgate did not capitalize Southgate said if we bring on attacking players during regular or extra time we could have lost the foothold in the match you had no foothold and you brought Saka anyways he's too scared to change anything until it's too late and why save the youngest, the least experienced penalty taker till the last when the pressure is the most served? I don't really get it. And now let's talk about the common link. England loses in the first real challenge. After the humiliating three losses in a single World Cup, same things happen again. You might say they defeated Croatia and Germany, but please don't forget that these teams surpassed their prime. Whether it's Croatia, golden generation coming to an end, or Germany that were struggling till this very day. They defeated Ukraine and Denmark, and then they lose in the final. 
Hold on a second. On a positive side, England reached the final. Even though the fans don't have the same trust they had back in the World Cup, sooner or later, England will win a trophy and football will be coming home. Timeline is 2022 and it's the World Cup again. England have a pretty easy group. They defeat Wales and Iran and somehow they draw against the USA. Nevertheless, they completely outplay Senegal, but here we are. England first real challenge in the World Cup, the champions themselves, France. And of course England lost. But where do we even start here? Well, before that, some will say, what if Kane scored the penalty? And I will say, what if Conte, Pogba and Benzema did play? Yeah, let's just not think of that. So yeah, let's start talking about the mistakes. Southgate forgot that Giro and Griezmann existed and only focused on Bappe. He did not use any of Colin Wilson, James Madison or Trent Alexander-Arnold. Takes Foden and Saka off. The only players actually running at the back line and streaks on his best mate Mount. And of course Raheem Sterling. You see these players come alive in the Premier League because the manager knows exactly how to use them. And to be fair, Southgate hasn't got any clue. That's why he's always saying it's hard to pick the squad. Any world-class manager would know his first squad selection before any tournament and know how to use the depth in his squad. That's just my opinion, but three tournaments is more than enough for Gary Southgate. It's in the game substitutions and tactics that he's getting wrong, which is a vital part of being a manager. New manager needed. But you might say, what if Eddie Howe don't want to leave Newcastle? There is no high profile England managers available out there. Are you serious? Are you actually serious? Why you're so obsessed with the fact that the manager have to be English? For me at least, it just has to be someone that can get the job done. No, trust me, it doesn't have to be Pip or Klopp. Just someone that you can actually trust. I don't want to go there and start throwing names, but I think you guys get what I mean. Some of you might say that the actual link between the tournaments is not that England loses in the first challenge. It might be that the players are just overrated. Alright then, let's say we have a list of the 10 best players in the whole world currently, right? Every list will have at least Jude Billingham, Harry Kane and Phil Foden, English players. And yeah, other lists might include Saka and Declan Rice too. I think that's enough. England currently have insane amount of talent and the future will be bright. The next Ballon d'Or winner might be actually English. So please, let's not miss any more chances. Come on England! Come on England! <laughs> Tell us something you man missing right? Around. If you'd have said at the start of the tournament they would have finished fourth, we would obviously be very, very pleased. However, for the last two games, we started off fantastic against Croatia, scoring very, very early. But our game after that was, was slightly disappointing. We, we, we started to play more of a traditional long ball game rather than play uh, more a possession game that we've played all tournaments. So it was disappointing in semi-final. 